get a lot of comments that my eBay turbocharger needs a restrictor. No, it doesn't. And I'm going to explain exactly why your cheap eBay turbo does not need an oil restrictor. Coming up, <laughs> I'm gonna get a lot of crap for this. Welcome back from the YouTube channel. I'm Matt, and we're going to talk about why an inexpensive eBay turbocharger does not need an oil restrictor. But, 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 but they need a restrictor. No, they don't. Well, granted, we're talking about journal style eBay turbochargers. We're talking about the, the cheap ones, and the cheap ones are going to be a journal style. Now, what does that mean? Wow. All right, we've got two different turbos here. This is a GT35. This is a new one that's gonna go on my project. This was on my project before, but both of these are a journal bearing style turbocharger, which is what makes them pretty inexpensive and why they work so well, even though they are inexpensive. Now, what does a journal bearing turbo mean? Think of it kind of like your crankshaft, your rods, your camshaft. They all ride on a bearing and require oil pressure in order to keep the shaft from essentially touching the bearing. It's floating in there, so it's a floating style bearing, but a ball bearing turbo, it's riding on some ball bearings, just like you would think of some skateboard wheels. The bearings in there, those are ball bearings. And how often is it that you oil those? <laughs> Hardly ever. In this case, these things are spinning hundreds of thousands of, of RPM. So if we were to cut this cartridge in half, you would see a shaft that runs through it and there really isn't any seals aside from a piston that's keeping the the compression from this side of the turbo and the exhaust gases from getting into the cartridge. A lot of people will put oil restrictors on turbos to fix a common problem and that common problem is not having a proper setup. So what we have here is our oil feed for our turbo. Here's the oil feed on this guy, and this is straight from the factory right here. And you can see that there is no restrictor. The restrictor is actually built in. You can see it right there. So the manufacturer builds in a restrictor into these journal style turbos. Same thing with this turbo. You can see the restrictor right there. There's no need to add an additional restriction on these style of turbos. And a lot of times when you get oil feed for a journal style turbo, like this would be sufficient for a ball bearing type turbo where it just needs oil to lubricate those bearings and for that oil to get out of there. And so sometimes it's hard to find parts that actually don't have a restrictor. What I'm actually going to do is take this and I am going to drill a hole that is about that size and get rid of this restrictor, clean it out, so that way it is just getting the full PSI of oil pressure that it needs, and that restrictor that is built into both of these turbos will give it enough pressure so that way the shaft will float. <laughs> The main problem with these style of turbos and any turbo, if it happens to leak out of the front or the back, which there are no real seals, it's just a little piston ring that is inside the front and towards the back just to keep dirt and debris out, also to keep the exhaust gases and the compressed air on this side of the turbo from entering inside the center cartridge here. Down these two tunnels to the journal bearing. And then it basically drains out. It's a gravity drain. It also has a little path here that takes oil up to the front thrust bearing as well. There is no true seal in the turbo. So some of the biggest mistakes that are made with these style of turbos, A, putting a restrictor on it. This is the reason most people use oil restrictors to correct a wrong problem and that essentially will make the turbo not last as long because it's not getting the proper PSI into these turbos. That or having an improper drain tube or not a drain tube at all. All these fittings that you buy at every shop in the world, they're wrong. It is recommended to go up to about three quarters of an inch or at least match the size 
as you can see with this turbo here, here's the drain for it. And we just wanna make sure that whatever we select is at least the size of this hole here, so that way it will drain sufficiently. Now, if I take my dial calipers, we'll take a look at how big this hole actually is. We're just a touch over half an inch here. And the drain that's gonna go on this turbo, or the drain tube, it's always recommended to use a factory style. It can be difficult to find one. But you can see here, if we measure this, this is actually a little bit bigger than the drain on there. So that is actually perfect for this turbo. So this will work well. By the way, I'll leave a link down in the description to some of these things and these turbos as well. So really some of the biggest issues is with these journal style bearing turbos, say that three times fast, is A, putting a restrictor on it. They don't need a restrictor. Two, <laughs> Not having a sufficient size oil return line or drain line to get the oil out of that cartridge to keep it from filling up because there's really no seals inside of these turbos. They're just little piston rings. You could take those piston rings out, feed it oil, and as long as you got a drain coming out of it, you're not gonna get any leaks out of other end, other each of the ends. You know what I'm talking about. This is a properly sized oil drain. If this is not draining sufficiently fast and this sits and fills up with oil, to where it reaches the oil seals up here, it is going to leak out. If it's not draining properly, the turbo will leak 100% of the time. This one was actually built without a seal in there. There's nothing to keep the oil in. Just to show you that there's actually no oil pressure on any of the seals and they don't have any contact with the oil as well. So I'm gonna simulate what it would be like in the car. I have it set up here on the VSR machine. I got the pump set up at about 60 PSI. This is just a clear tube return line. We're gonna turn the pump on. You can see the oil coming out here. Now, as you can see, there's no oil coming out of that seal. It still can rotate. There's no pressure on it, nothing. So you don't even need to have an oil seal in there to keep the oil in. But what I can show you is you move the return line in an upward position, you'll instantly see the oil starts to come out of the seal. What I would simulate here is if you had a bad return line or if you had a kink in it. <laughs> One of the other main causes of a turbo leaking out of either side is back pressure inside the engine, blow by pressure or just the blow by pressure from the piston rings making its way into the crankcase and essentially just traveling up this tube, not allowing the oil to completely drain out of the cartridge. So it has nowhere else to go, but out of each end. So the best thing you can do for a journal style inexpensive eBay turbo is to make sure that you're just sending straight oil pressure from your engine block to your turbo. It's got a restrictor inside of it as it is. Make sure you got a proper drain. Ideally, it would be about the size of the drain hole of your turbocharger, or at least three quarters of an inch, kind of as a default, just to make things simple. And then you wanna make sure your engine's in good health. It doesn't have a whole lot of blow by going past Past the piston rings or you're not your your positive crank case ventilation make sure that's all in check I personally made the mistake of not making sure my PCV setup was proper when I installed this on my naturally aspirated Chevy Cruze and I'll go deeper into how I'm going to set up my PCV system for boosting a naturally aspirated motor so be sure to keep an eye out for that thanks for tuning in I hope this helped clear up a few kind of miss, common misconceptions out there on the internet. If you're new to the channel, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Let me know what you think, guys, down in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't subbed already. Until next time, peace out with your peace out.